What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Pack Only Road to Glory. As you can see on the screen, I managed to complete the Argentinian SBC. Um, I think I've got three of the four of these ones done now. I've got one left, which is the Brazilian one. And um, for that, you get the 35k mega pack, a thousand coins and a 50k pack. Unfortunately, I just don't have the players in the club available right now uh, to complete the Brazilian one. Um, so we'll we'll be. I'm sure we'll get there over the next few weeks with rewards, and that would be awesome to get a 35k pack and a 50k pack. And uh, as as I say, guys, on the screen you're watching me. Um, you know, do do a few things here or there. Now in today's episode, it's a really good episode. We get we get some amazing amazing pack luck um, with a uh, with the gold upgrade pack, which is uh, all very interesting. But guys, if you could leave a like on the video, it'd be much appreciated. If you are enjoying this series, just smash a thumbs up. I know I ask a lot from you guys, and you deliver a lot. Just watching the videos in itself is uh, phenomenal, fantastic, by any stretch of the imagination. But I would appreciate any kind of uh, thumb up that you could give. Let's try and keep the likes rolling over 10k on this uh, on this series. It would be really nice. I've got some comments to read. It's quite a short episode today, I think, about 16 minutes, which by my standards is uh, is relatively short. But I've got a lot of lot of stuff to cover today. A lot of really interesting comments, and the first one is about pace and 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 stats and and um, what they actually represent in in the game. And it comes from Alberto Pinese. I apologise, Alberto, if I've uh, butchered your surname. By the way, look at that. We get Jack Butler in the pack. Let's go. You saw that last episode because I actually did these before the gameplay of last episode. He says, "Hi, Nep from Italy." This is my question. In real life, the fastest player can run at 35 kilometers per hour. So I assume that, that in FIFA it's also the same. Taking that into consideration, what do you think is the difference between a 90 pace and an 80 pace player? Is it massive or almost irrelevant? There would only be like 3 kilometers or 1.86 meters if you prefer. In addition, if 99 sprint speed player can reach 35 kilometers an hour, Mertesacker with 28 sprint speed can only reach 9.89 kilometers per hour. I don't think this is realistic. What do you think EA can do? I know that pace is a combination of sprint speed and acceleration, so you could analyze the different situations. Sorry for my bad English. Thank you for the videos. I always enjoy to watch them, and you kind of help me to improve my English. Well, thank you for the kind words, dude. Um, I don't think that the pace... It's, it's impossible for EA to take the pace of the player in real life and replicate that in FIFA because of the, the, the fact that one stride in FIFA anyway is largely different to one stride in real life in terms of distance covered. Um, but also on top of that, because of the time frame, uh, for example, in real life, a goalkeeper can only hold on to the ball for six seconds legally um, before ha you know having to throw it out at fear of getting booked. That same six seconds in FIFA is just short of one minute of in-game time. And you can actually hold the ball with your keeper for a good, I'd say, one to three in-game FIFA minutes. So it's, it's very difficult to directly relate and correlate real-life attributes and, and, fi and, and facts to the in-game fiction. Um, what I will say is this. There was a, uh, a post made in FIFA 15 when Chemstyles first came about, about how much impact the Hunter Chemstyle has over a player and the pace that they gain. And it was negligible. In my personal opinion, the difference as you ask, let, let's assume that your 90 pace is literally 90 sprint speed and 90 acceleration, and your 80 pace in this, uh, you know, this incident is 80 sprint speed and 80 acceleration. Um, I, I think that if, if you start them on the halfway line and run them to the, the goal, I think there would be that they would be almost next to each other as they cross the finish line. Um, I don't think the, the the discrepancy between pace is overly like impactful because it just can't be. Because as you say, otherwise, someone like Murtasaka would be essentially walking pace, uh, which would is is just improbable and impossible, and, and not a fair reflection of how players play in this game. Um, so uh, p pace is one of those ones that. Even though I get frustrated when, you know, why can't this guy outrun this guy? And we all get there. We all get that kind of frustration levels, right? But I think people wildly overestimate uh, what the pace attribute represents in-game. And they also don't understand, like what you pointed out here, that sprint speed and acceleration make up the pace. And you could have someone with 90 pace that has... 95 sprint speed which is obviously exceptionally fast but you could also have someone with 90 pace that has 85 sprint speed which isn't as fast so you could have two players with identical pace at face value 
but are actually wildly different in game. Um, also to take into consideration that balance, agility and reactions are important with pace, specifically with the ball carrier. Uh, you know, when you have someone with 90, 90 pace, in off ball, they will run at fa fast regardless. But when in possession of the ball, they will run slower, but the better their excel the better their agility, the better their balance, the better their reactions, the faster they will run. That's factual. Um, so th there's that to take into consideration. And then stamina also plays a big part in pace because if you've got someone with low stamina, let's say you've got like, uh, you know, I don't know, like a Danny Welbeck with a pace attributes card on him, but he's only got 72 stamina or whatever. I don't actually know how much stamina he has. I might be bang on the money, but I don't think I am. Um, yeah, let's say he has 72 stamina. That bar that you see in the bottom left, when he starts sprinting, that burns much quicker to the bottom and then the white, you know, the little blue bar, and then the white bar behind it that his, is his stamina level that depletes through the game drains so much quicker that at certain points in the game, 45th, 50th, 60th, 70th minute, it doesn't matter how much sprint speed or how much acceleration he's got, if he burns that sprint speed and acceleration due to low stamina levels within the first, you know, within a second of you holding the sprint button. There are a lot of factors that come into pace, like shirt pulling, strength, like there's so much more than just how fast does his card say he is versus how fast is he actually in the game. Um, but it would be interesting, again, if, if someone who has the time and capabilities could get into a game and, and test the differences between players uh, and how much pace they have, how much stamina they have, and how long it takes them to run from point A to point B, and then compare that and overlay that with players of varying degrees of pace and see what the true difference is. It would definitely be an experiment I, I, I would get behind and, and uh, love, to, uh, love to engage in. Robert Sylvester says, Nepenthes, please do some gold to rare upgrades. Within the first 10 of mine, I got Walker, Smalling, Bailly and Martial. Like so he can see. I did. I did one in this episode. And we got our best pack yet. So there you go. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm not necessarily doing those as much is because I value the gold players. Um, in SBCs, for example, Nico Cranchar, in right now whilst recording this, is worth like 7,000 coins. I, he's the sort of player that if there wasn't that Rangers SBC, because I know there is, like, and that's why I kept him, if, there, if that SPL SBC wasn't there, um, I, and I mean the Griffiths one, not the marquee matchups, I would have probably put him in a gold upgrade. And now that the Celtic vs Rangers marquee matchups is there... I wouldn't have had him to sell him for six or seven thousand coins. So I'm very wary and, and uh, coy with who I use and why. Um, but definitely, I'm 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 happy to use the upgrade pack method. And and I think during team of the season is when I'll really start to use and abuse it because if we could get a, a team of the season player or two out of those uh, those gold upgrades, I think that'd be like massive for the series. Um, Kyo Naka says, Hey Nep, I've been playing FIFA 17 for four months now and I have an average BPL team. I'm still in Division 4 and I always get relegated from it. I always wonder why Division 5 is much easier than Division 4. I always get the title of Div 5. Do you know the reason why it's easy? Sorry for my grammar, love from Japan. First of all, Japan, crazy. Like... I, like it's it's interesting. It's so it's so intriguing and and amazing to me that you guys are legitimately from around the world. Like no exceptions. Well, maybe North Korea, but other than North Korea, no exceptions, which is amazing uh, in my opinion. Secondly, it's I, I don't I don't have an exact answer for you, but in short, when you win games in seasons, you match against tougher opponents based on your elo. And when you lose games, you match against weaker opponents. So what seems to be the case is that you have hit your peak right now. I'm not saying you've hit a peak that you can't ever break through or, or a ceiling that you can't break through. But you've plateaued to your skill level. And when you go up to Division 4, you come up against people of a similar and potentially a better caliber because you might face someone that just got relegated from division three as you got promoted into division four so there's a little bit of a skill imbalance there um so you get relegated down to division five and then alternatively you may well face against people that have just been promoted from division six whilst you're in division five giving you easier wins um and in, in fact, because you can actually play people on different levels in divisions, you might even be in Division 5 playing against someone in Division 7. So they might have just been promoted from Division 8. So what, what I would say is, I, I think once you hold Division 4 for the first time, you'll then find your feeling in that, that division and you'll eventually get up to Division 3. But there's, no, there's, no, uh, there's nothing wrong with being stuck in a Division 4, Division 5 limbo, it's a really, like, a good amount of points to have to reach to get a good coin balance. And, and for me personally, I think 
Div, four, Div 3, 4 and 5 are probably the most rewarding for the least effort in terms of coin rewards back for your money. So it's a decent division to be stuck in whilst you're trying to, to, to benefit your game. And if you've only been playing FIFA 17 for four months uh, and you only have an average EPL team, it would, it would suggest that you don't really play that much FIFA. So the fact, again, that you're, you're able to hit Division 4 off the back of that is, is really good. Um, just keep at it, keep working, and I'm sure you'll get yourself up into Division 3. Dan Roloff says you can use Bonatia instead of Savage. Um, yeah, I could have done uh, because I did have Neto. I tried to sell Neto. Um, but I ended up not selling Neto because he didn't sell for how much I wanted him for. So now I'm actually going to keep him for that Brazilian SBC. And Tom007 says, simple question, but who do you like more, Ronaldo or Messi? Um, in terms of real life, I'm not the kind of person that, that says, I love this player more than that player. I, I'm just genuinely happy that in my lifetime, I have got to watch arguably the best two players on the planet ever. And I say arguably because I know some people will go back to, you know, players like George Best, players like Pele, like Maradona, like Thierry Henry, like Sol Campbell, like, you know, the, the, you know what I'm saying, like Ray Parler, like, like these gods that we've seen growing up. Um, but I'm genuinely just blessed to be able to watch both of them play. Uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of real life, though, I, I think Messi is a technically better player. I, I think there's no one technically better than Messi in the world ever. But I think Ronaldo is a more well-rounded, complete football player. I think Ronaldo's got far, far better physical attributes. I, I think he's just... I, I just think, yeah, like I said, I think technically Messi is the best player. But I think physically and in, in terms of uh, a complete football player, I think Ronaldo is the better player. Um, but arguably, it, it doesn't matter what I think. It, it just matters what they do. You know, if you look at stats alone, Messi has done more. He's scored more goals. He's got more assists in far fewer games. But when you take that into consideration, you've got to consider that, that Messi has played his whole life at Barcelona. He's consistently been surrounded with world-class talent, whereas Ronaldo started out at Sporting. He moved to Manchester United. At Man United, you know, they were going through a tough time at a period when he was a when Ronaldo was like a a younger a younger boy playing for Man United. He had a couple of really horrendous seasons. The fans hated him for one of the seasons. He was super selfish. He, you know, it was all about him, and he, he didn't perform. He didn't get the goals and assists that Messi was getting at that same time because Messi was playing with Ronaldinho and Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Thierry Henry. And, you know, Xavi and Iniesta and Messi was surrounded by these amazing players to the point where he was still able to, like, score um, an immense amount of goals and assists um, for, for that reason, you know. If, if, if Ronaldo spent his whole life at Real Madrid, I'm sure he'd have a far better goal and assist ratio than he currently does. In terms of FIFA, um, I, I'm torn because... I've, I've lo I think 99 Ronaldo is probably the best card that I've used in this game this year. But I play a lot on my road to glory with the 94 Ronaldo and the 93 Messi. And I think the 93 Messi is a better card. I think this year the meta of the game more suits the, the kind of like high agility fast players than it does suit the bulky strongman on the wing. At, up front, at striker, I feel like the target man is better. You know, for me, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is God. Suarez is God. But on the wings, um, I definitely feel like... Um I definitely feel like the high, high agile players are, are the ones to do. Arthur Vidar Loeb says, Hi, you are definitely my favourite YouTube star, but I need help. Well, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. He says, I have an all right team, but I can't qualify for foot champs, but I'm in Division 3. So could you help me? Is there a special way to play in foot champs? There's no special way to play, dude. But just much like the, uh, the gentleman from Japan, it's a situation where if you're already in Division 3, you should legitimately be able to walk the daily knockouts because they are, like, no disrespect to the calibre of players that play in the daily knockouts. They are not difficult tournaments to win. Uh, you know, on this account, our pack-only account, I won the very first daily knockout tournament I went into with, like, a 60 chemistry, horrendous gold team because the calibre of players is so very low. So if you're in Division 3, you're clearly a competent player. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, you, you, you know, you, you should be able to win and qualify. And, and if you, again, if you're in Division 3, I, I, I believe through experience that you'll be able to hit Gold 3 quite comfortably after being in Division 3. And then you'll auto-qualify every week, which would uh, obviously be fantastic. 
Colin Regan, a uh, real quick last comment here, it says, uh, with St. Patrick's Day coming up, would, be, would it be smart to invest in some Irish players? Already have a load of bronzes, but no silvers and golds. They're also cheap right now, and I think an SBC is coming. However, I don't know how great the reward will be for that SBC. If no SBC comes out, and I will not have a lot, lost a lot, and I can resell all the players, let me know what you think. No. Uh, the, the investment opportunity for St. Patrick's Day is long gone. Um, there are investors that are way, way ahead of you and I in terms of looking, looking forwards to try and invest. And what's going to happen is, come St. Patrick's Day, all the investors that are investing for coins are just going to dump all the players at once and it's going to drive their price down low. It did it last year as well. It will do it this year. There will be some players, like any, any Irish player that's silver that has really good stats, most notably pace, um, they will be worth investing in just to sell on. But in general, the bronzes, the golds and stuff, it's, in my opinion, it's not worth doing it. You're, you're, it's, it's a fool's errand, really. So, guys, we did a gold upgrade. I got an inform, and it was the upgraded second inform Thalvin. 86 rated, 85 pace and shooting, 87 passing, 88 dribbling, and 75 physical. Genuinely unbelievable. The best pack we've had yet on this series. And it came from a gold upgrade. I was so happy, so impressed. And he's going to slot straight into our team and hopefully score some goals that can carry us to gold two or gold one this weekend league. This, though, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.